Welcome to Understanding Gradle. Last time we talked about how to set up and configure testing for Java projects. We learned that the setup is based on the source set concept of Gradle and the only thing that's added on top for testing is the test task that performs the actual test execution. So this time we'll look at the test task in detail. First, we will explore how it is technically working. This will help us to understand which configuration options we have and why we might want to use them. To understand the workings of the test task, it's helpful to understand which processes Gradle uses and starts when running a build. Because Gradle is written in Java and all the configuration and plugin code we write is done in JVM languages, all processes Gradle starts are Java virtual machines. This is also the reason why you need to have Java installed to run Gradle. When you type a Gradle command, Gradle starts a lightweight JVM process. The only thing this process does is printing out the feedback to the console or sending feedback to the IDE so that you can see the status of your build. The process directly connects to the Gradle daemon. This is a process that's in most cases already running. It's done like this because it caches a lot of information in memory. So running the same build over and over again profits from all these caching mechanisms. The only thing the client process sends to the daemon is which build you want to run. So basically the directory you are in and which tasks you type in the command line and which arguments. The daemon is then doing the work. First it is configuring the build, which includes interpreting our plugins and build scripts. Once this is done, Gradle builds the task graph based on this information. The task graph contains the information which tasks need to be executed in which order. Following this, Gradle then executes the tasks, possibly skipping some if they are up to date or getting results from cache if possible. See my video about tasks for more details. If a task is executed, Gradle basically gives control to the task action, which can be, as we discussed in the video on implementing task, any code written in a JVM language. Now if you put the code that does the work directly in the task action, as we did in the example in the other video, then the code is directly executed inside the Gradle daemon process. This is fine for simple tasks like the ones we discussed in the other video. But if you do more heavy things here, or maybe use external libraries and so on, you have to be careful to not harm the daemon process itself. For example, if you introduce a memory leak in your task implementation, this might not only have a negative performance impact on the current build, but also on future builds running in the daemon process. So for tasks that do heavy work, which means either requiring a lot of memory or doing work in parallel, there is another pattern, which are worker processes. These are used by the test task, but for example also by the compile task, which we are going to look at in another video. And there is also a public API, the so-called worker API, to use this in your own task implementations. These processes also run a thin layer of greater specific code that keeps up a connection with the daemon process, so that the daemon process can send information about which work to do to the worker processes, and the worker processes can send back logging and success and failure information to the daemon. These processes can stay alive to accept several units of work one after the other. And there could be multiple of them running in parallel. The test task employs all of this. If configured to run tests in parallel, it will start several worker processes. And then it will send test classes to them one by one. On the worker processes, the test engine of the selected test framework, for example JUnit 5, are then executed to run the tests without being aware that they are running in a Gradle worker process. This setup also explains why the test task needs to know about the different test frameworks and engines, why the tests run independent of Gradle code on the test workers. On the daemon side, Gradle needs to identify which tests are there to be executed, to send them to the worker processes. And this works differently for each test framework because they use different annotations or different means to identify tests and test classes. Note that Gradle always sends a complete test class for execution to a test worker. So if you want to have high parallelization, you should split tests into many classes and not have only a few classes with a lot of test methods. Now that we have explored the technical setup of testing, we can look at how to configure the test task to make the best use of this. You might have noticed already that by default tests are not executed in parallel. So the most important option, which you should always use, is the max parallel forks option. This tells the test task that it should run in parallel 
if you set the number to something higher than 1. As the name indicates, the option sets the max number of parallel worker processes that will be started. If too many things run in parallel, it might actually decrease performance. This is something to experiment with depending on the kind of tests you have. There is another number in Gradle, which is the max workers configuration, that configures how much Gradle is doing in parallel in general. So if you set this here to a very high number, you will notice that this amount of parallelism is never reached. The max workers option by default is derived from the number of processor cores available on the machine you are running on. So letting that control the parallelism might be an option. You can also set the max workers to a fixed value in the Gradle properties file. These are things to experiment with depending on the resources your tests require when running and the different machines the tests run on. Another thing to adjust here is the memory that is made available on the worker JVMs to the running tests. You can control this with the max heap size and the min heap size arguments here, which corresponds to the XMX or XMS arguments, which you might know from calling Java directly. In fact, because the workers are separate JVM processes, you can set any JVM argument here as a task configuration. If the argument is something you want to compute from other settings in the build, you can also add a so-called JVM argument provider, which only computes the value of the argument right before the task is executed. Furthermore, you can also set system properties. Then there are options specific to the selected test framework to include or exclude tests with a certain tag, which we've already used in the previous video to split our test execution among two test tasks. You could use this, for example, if your tests have different requirements for the JVM arguments. So if you have a few tests that are memory heavy, you could tag them and you could add a second test task that only executes this memory heavy tests with a higher max heap size settings and possibly with reduced parallelism. Another thing to configure is test logging. Something that's often done is setting show standard streams to true, which means that everything that is printed during test execution will appear directly in the console when running the build. The output of a test task are reports that contain the test results. You can configure here which ones you want to have generated and where they are located. Now if we execute our tests with this configuration, we can see in the Gradle console that several tests run in parallel. This video gave an overview of the most common options you need when configuring testing. To understand what these options are doing, it's good to have a bit of technical understanding of how the test execution is done in Gradle about which we talked in the first part of this video. We will explore how similar things can be configured for Java compilation in one of the next videos. If you don't want to miss future videos, please consider subscribing to this channel. See you next time.